Welcome to the Never Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and today we're going to talk about a traditional boning knife, Western boning knife, versus the traditional Japanese honosuke. So the honosuke knife is a boning knife, and in the Asian world, it looks a little different than what you're used to. So let's just go ahead and talk first about what you're used to. So your standard Western knife, be it French, be it Swiss, be it German, or an American knife of some kind, it's going to have this look. It's gonna be somewhat skinny. It's gonna be flexible. You don't want it to be overly flexible, but it does have some flex. Um, and what you're gonna be able to do is, is it needs to be resistant so you can cut around bone. You can see the thickness of the spine. Comfortable handle that's not too big. And um, this particular knife is one of the top 10 knives I know from all the Western magazines. Um, this particular company, Hinkle, like Zwilling, it's a great company. And if you're into German knives and everything, this is definitely one of the better ones. And for most of you who've ever used a bony knife, this is what you're used to. So you're going to be surprised when you see the difference in the Japanese counterpart. Okay, so I want to move on to the Japanese counterpart to show you two different things. These are both Japanese boning knives. You'll see that the shape itself is similar. Um, one of these is 150 millimeter, the other 170, so they're different in size. But that should have nothing to do with the thickness, which you'll see is quite extraordinarily different. And by comparison to the Western knife, it's completely different. You will see that the Japanese knives have no flex. Um, they are very rigid. They do have the sharp pointy edge so you can get in around the bone. And I know some of you are probably thinking this thick knife isn't that sharp, but out of the box, this is the sharpest knife that's ever come to me with a BESS, if you're not familiar with that, best certified. Had a best certified score of 50, which is the equivalent of a razor blade. So the philosophy behind the Japanese boning knife is it's rigid. And actually, they would tell you that they want the boning knife to be thick at the spine. It's better to chop through bone or around the bone. So we have several different examples of poultry here. Um, so I do not have a large cow. I do not have a pig on the counter. And I do not have a lamb for me to French lamb chops. Um, we're just going to show some boning technique. And in doing so, just show you how the knives perform. So I'm going to move the two boning knives and just go into what you know is the traditional, traditional poultry. So if you were breaking this down, you would be used to, you know, taking this. You might be, you know, getting rid of the, um, the tips. You know, you can see the knife has a lot of flex. And this is brand new. Brand new. Never used before to right now. Just pointing that out. Um, so we've got like some pieces. Let's go ahead and get the, the wing. Um, so, you know, it's funny because you can really, you can navigate it. I haven't done this in a minute, so obviously the other side should be a little bit easier. Typically, I let it hang, and the weight of it kind of gets behind it. You can see, obviously, it comes right back to you. So the knife navigates pretty easily. We'll go ahead and clean that up a little bit to keep our cutting board neat. Um, if we were going to be doing the breast, I would go ahead and come in behind here. So again, you know, the edge is sharp thin, lightweight, I'm able to actually get in behind this, pop this out. So you can get way in there. You can see that there's that oyster that's like right up in there. And, you know, we have the, the piece. And another thing is, you know, when you see this, I'm going to see if I guess right. Oh, I guessed right. So I'm able to just take that right off, have my pieces. It's been a minute, but, you know, it'll come back to you. Okay, so you definitely have the opportunity to kind of see what this looks like. Um, 
Let's go ahead and do the breast itself. So you would slice down the, the middle, nice and sharp. So um, staying along the inside of the bone. And because it's a little bit flexible, it seems like you can kind of maneuver. And that looks pretty good. All right, by the way, this is for dinner tonight. Okay, so I personally am not used to this knife. I'm not trying to do it any injustice for those of you who are used to it. You know, it's a good thing. Um, you normally would come right in here, separate. It's nice. Pop the, the there's a joint. You're able to pop the joint out right in here. There, you're going to literally pop you can it literally comes right out right there it kind of tells you what to do okay so coming in here getting in behind see that bone right there you got to get in behind that bone and we've got that flexible not obviously i'm not so good on the um the opposite side okay so once again there's like an actual line that tells you where to cut. Um, it isn't amazing how I just drew like right on the line and told you what to cut. Obviously, I'm not a butcher, but we did okay. So let's find that bone again right down the middle. We're able to kind of come in right behind that cartilage. You can see it there. There's a wishbone up here. So because you're coming in contact with bone all the time, you need the knife to be uh, sturdy. Okay, so as I'm kind of coming in, getting my fingers out the way, I'm kind of scraping to get that off. My wife's doing a pretty good job of filming this, I think. Mm, we'll see. And um, so we've got that breast. Now, the, for those of you who know anything about this, this is still good. This is actually going to be stock. So we would save this and make chicken stock out of it. Okay, so let's show you the Japanese knives that work. That is dinner, it's going on the grill. Okay, so. So that was the Western knife, this was the Hinkle. It's a five and a half inch. You can see that it's definitely got some flex. Great knife, nothing wrong with it. Definitely enjoy having it by comparison. This is the Anrayu 150 millimeter, so it is definitely longer. And that is the shortest this knife comes in, typically in Japan, 150 millimeter. So as far as like blade length, it's just a little bit longer. The handle is very comfortable. It might be a little bit bigger in girth. So to move that, so this knife is a little bit thicker. It has no flex. Okay, it has no flex. This particular knife is oxidative, so um, it is a carbon steel knife. This is a typical uh, stainless steel knife. You're not gonna have any problems. So again, coming in here, um, let's see if we can find that joint. Okay, so kind of making quick, you know, of course I'm warmed up now, you know? Okay, so again, it, it's going to look the same. You know, if we hold this up, kind of come in, you can see quickly using the sheer weight of the bird, you know, it kind of tells you what to do. So coming over here, um, just using the weight of the bird, kind of getting in underneath it, you know, no problems. Okay, so we're going to split this up with the other knife. So I'm going to go ahead and do the side that I can't stand to do first. And just show you that, again, super sharp knife, able to do everything. It does the flexibility was not needed here. Again, let's pop that out. You can literally see that that came out, okay, right there. So no problems. Find that joint, there's a tendon, no problems. 
So I did not need it to be flexible in this instance. This is poultry. Maybe when it came to say um, uh, the, the lamb, if we were doing a rack of lamb, maybe Frenching using this knife this way, but why couldn't you still use this knife? You could still use it this way. It's not something that you're used to when it is a little larger, um, but I don't see, I haven't personally come into any way that uh, the flexible knife needed to be here. I'm sure it get tedious, you know, you can get around some points, it's a good thing. This knife is a beast, okay, it is thick. I mean, it will just literally cut through. This is the sharpest knife that I ever got. My wife and everybody loves this pie cutlery handle that was custom made for it. Um, so again, you know, uh, you don't need it to be flexible. So we're just cutting around. We're getting in here, popping that joint out. You can literally see the bone pop out. Okay. So there we go, that's just gorgeous. I mean, so the flexible knife part wasn't necessarily a thing. Um, so it'll definitely make uh, light work of it. So dinner's gonna be fun tonight. So let's go ahead and show this real quick, like down the middle. So a big knife, you know, again, scoring right down the middle. No problems, okay? So, so again, not flexible and yet no problems. Like, so I don't know if I can bend this enough for you to see, but I am still going right up against the bone. Okay. You can see the tenderloin coming out right there. So we're able to scrape right along the edge of the cartilage just like before so you know that just the japanese have a different take on it i'll use the other one for the other side so oh we've got the cartilage right down the middle so we just need to get on the inside of it and this is always the best angle to see what's going on. So you can kind of see that I'm just curving on the inside where that bone is on the rib cage. You can see it separate. Remember, don't cut yourself. Okay, so we'll get through the neck right there. And again, stock. So take a look one more time as we clean these up. You have two very rigid Japanese knives in very large sizes in comparison to the Western knife. Non-flexible compared to flex. And uh, the big thick spine compared to the other. It just comes down to what do you like. And the Japanese culture, they really they just do it different. We're gonna have another episode where I show you the Western fillet knife versus the Deba knife that the Japanese you know, country uses. The Asian community is the largest consumer of seafood in the world, and they don't use the Western knives that we use at all to handle fish and seafood. So that'll be another episode coming up soon. I'm so excited to show it to you. So as you can see, I have a feast getting ready to happen on the grill. God bless you guys for watching. We appreciate you. If you've never seen this before, Hope that was fun. I tell you what, one last quick thing. I just realized I got another beautiful, this is the duck breast. Um, obviously, just to show you how thick these knives are and, and sharp these knives are. Now, I haven't sharpened this one in a long time. So, you know, let's, but I mean, that's butter. You know, we don't want to, um, to actually damage the meat of the duck in the crosshatch pattern. So even though this knife is heavy and everything. We're still able at that thickness to get it sharp and still able to use it. Just like
So I'm excited about my dinner again. Thank you. God bless. This was definitely not a dull moment. And definitely this is going to be not a dull dinner. Time to get the fire going. We'll see you next week. We're out.